In this lesson, I want to introduce to you something really cool in modern C++. It is std async. So let's go ahead and dive into it. std async means, well, without synchronization. That's what an asynchronous function means. And we can see that it's something that's supported in our thread support library since C++ 11. And this is something that might be much more familiar with folks if you're coming from other languages like Java, for example and perhaps have used their promise or async keyword. But in C++, what does async mean? Well, it basically means that I can launch a thread and I won't be blocked on that thread. It can go execute wherever it wants. But the key idea is eventually I might need a result from that thread later on in my program. And if I need some synchronization, then I can wait on the thread's value. Let's go ahead and just take a look at an example so we can illustrate this concept. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is start a program here, and I'm going to include a header file for a future. And that's what's going to give me this access to std async here. Now, what is a future? This sort of idea here. And there's this idea of promises and futures in C++, so they kind of go uh, similar. But when we're working with async function here, Basically, it says a class std function provides a mechanism to access the result of an asynchronous operation. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that means. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a future. I'm going to do std future and the result that I eventually want to get from some asynchronous function. Remember, an asynchronous function is just some function in some other thread, ideally, that's executing off in the wild. So let's just do something that returns an integer value. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a uh, simple function. I'm just going to do something like computing the square here. That's where we turn x times x here. Okay, so let's go ahead and then um, create this function. I'm just going to call it async function and take advantage of our new async feature here. And I'll go ahead and leave down the text here and you can see what some of the uh, different operations are that we can do here. Uh, or rather, what's related is just this idea of future here. Okay, so now that we're back here, how do I launch a asynchronous uh, function here? Well, same way that we did our other threads. I provide in the uh, function address here, uh, or it can be any callable function, and the parameter here. So 12 is what's going to be passed into square. Okay, so. Now that that functions launch, let's see if I just go ahead and terminate the program here. And I'll just put an end line here. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. Uh, the program uh, compiles. And if I run it, well, it doesn't really do anything. I never retrieved this result. So how do I actually get the result back from this thread that computed this value? Well, again, that's what's stored in the future here. So the result of my operation here is, well, from my async function here, this future, uh, and I can get or retrieve that value. Okay, so let's go ahead and now print out the result. Result is, and I'll leave the colon there, whatever our result is. Okay, and the result is 140. So pretty cool here. Now, what's really interesting about this program is you might say, well, Mike, why didn't we just, you know, why did we bother to even have this future here? I mean, we could have just called square and, you know, not created these additional objects. And I would agree. But remember, this is just a simple example to illustrate uh, this new concept of future. So the idea here is if I wanted, as soon as I start executing this asynchronously in some other thread here, I can start doing some other work here. Now let's just pretend, uh, and I'm going to create some artificial work here. And I'll go ahead and just output the square of a bunch of values. And then let's go ahead and rerun this program. And we can see that we're able to achieve a bunch of work. Now, what's interesting, though, is while this was executing a different thread, I was still able to make progress here. But you'll notice that at the end here, the result is always printed out at the end here. And I'll run this program a bunch of times so you can see that that is true. 
And that is because our function is going to execute asynchronously. And at line 16 here, where I'm requesting the result, get here. So let me go ahead and show that in the future here. You can see that it returns the result of our future. But what we'll see, and let me go ahead and zoom into this get on the future page, is that we have to wait until the future has a valid result. So this means, and I'll add this in the comments here just so it's clear, we are blocked at line, uh, or rather at the get operation until our result has computed. Okay, so this is effectively, you could think of this like a join operation that we've learned of before, or you can just think of this as our program can't proceed until we actually produce this result. So this is a very intense computation here that we have to wait for. Yeah, I can start computing in the background for a while while we go ahead and proceed and do some other work in our program, but only until that uh, result has finally been computed, then can we proceed. So we might be blocked here if that result hasn't been computed. If it has, then we can proceed forward. So this is kind of a cool idea with async because we can start making some progress on a task like we're doing here at line 11, continue some work along our main thread or some other thread, and then finally we can block once we actually need to compute that result. So that's the idea with futures and using them with std async. And in a future lesson, I'll go ahead and put together a little bit more of a realistic uh, example so that you can see how you might pragmatically use this. For now, you can know that with very little synchronization, very locked, if you just need to compute some result in another thread, this can be a great tool to do. So, hope you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe if you have been enjoying this series, and we'll see you very, very soon in the next video.